recording it. Hi viewers, in today's class, I'm going to discuss on eight different types of antennas. So here you can see uh, we are having four antennas, parabolic, helical, rhombic and microscope. In the same way, these are the other four antennas, Yagi Uda, lens antenna, loop antenna and horn antenna. So why I have made this video, I want to just uh, say in a single word, while we are going for examination hall, before going to that as a quick review, we can use this PPT. So in that point of view, have, I have prepared uh, the slides. So first we will discuss on parabolic reflector. As already I said, this video is purely in exam point of view only. Every antenna I will be discussing only the highlight points and how to remember for exams, right? So first one is parabolic reflector antenna. So this parabolic reflector antenna, Op, will be operating in the range of 1 megahertz frequency. For any type of antenna, there are just five points you have to keep in mind. First one is range of frequency, the diagram of that antenna, its basic principle of operation, <clears throat> its fundamental designing rules, as well as its applications are pros and cons. Only these things you can uh, keep in mind and go for exam. Now, in parabolic antenna, you, by seeing the diagram, uh, you can see here, this diagram uh, I have drawn in a simplified way, just in the shape of the letter C, like this. This antenna is purely based on the concept of equality of path length. And here we have say, uh, said that microwave antenna formed from shape of paraboloid. You can uh, recall either with letter C or shape of paraboloid. By uh, the shape of this antenna, it is also called as microwave dish antenna also. And equality of path length means that you can recall from this equation. See here, this is a parabolic antenna. And we all of us know that from this center point or locus point, whatever the uh, lines that are passing by touching this uh, curve, all of the lines will be having the equality of path lengths. That means starting from this F, Till the end of this point, if you calculate any length of the antenna, there will be same or otherwise they can be equal to some constant k. So, fp plus p1 pp dash is equal to fq plus q q dash will be equal to some constant. So, that principle simply we call it as equality of path length. And one more point we have to keep in mind for parabola is its designing. Its designing is purely based on the mathematical concept of parabolas and here how we feed the antenna is also an important parameter you have to keep in mind. Why feeding, I said, is based on the type of the feed we are using for parabolic antenna. Its uh, gain, its directivity, everything will be changing. See here, major factors that we need to keep in mind for designing antenna are F and D. What is F? What is D? F is nothing but focal length. So, in this diagram, you can observe starting from here to here this length is called as focal length and this is called as diameter opening part or we can uh, simply refer it as diameter of or mouth diameter of parabola right if we perfectly calculate this f and d that uh, parabolic antenna is a perfectly operated antenna so how we can choose the two values see here if we are taking a smaller f value we don't get a proper output like this that means your output if uh, this f value is very smaller means the output will not be uniform why because the focal length is very very small if you are taking larger f means spillover effect may occur that means the spreading this f is moving outer this area means your radiation will be going outside like this in this case what happens non-uniform see here shorter wavelengths and here longer lens that means non-uniform nature will be occurring here here is over over spilling will be occurring so how to choose that value just simply exactly f by d ratio should be equal to 1 by 4 that means if you see mathematically it should be exactly at the mouth of the diameter this should be our focal length so in such a case your antenna radiation will be perfect so for that in a standard way the focal length of the Parabola is decided as f by d is equal to 1 by 4. f is focal length, d is diameter width. Okay. 
next types of feeds uh, here basically i have already said that feeding of the parabolic antenna is very very important in that point of view basically we are having three types of feed cassegrain feed offset feed griegorian feed right uh, these are basically used in uh, radio and wireless applications and next we will move to the next type of antenna next one is helical antenna so helical antennas are operated basically in the frequency range of 30 megahertz to 3 gigahertz and uh, already you can see here the structure of helical antenna see how this antenna is wounded just a simple wire is taken and it is wounded in the form of a helix like this and this small triangle we have shown here right this is the basic designing principle of the uh, helical antenna the basic principle of helical antenna is nothing but a traveling wave antenna in this the entire concept is like wired antennas that means it belongs to the family of wired antenna already i said for any antenna you need to keep in mind just four to five points only one is frequency the other is uh, principle of radiation here traveling wave antenna is the radiation principle right next designing equations for any antenna, you need to keep in mind just three to four points only. That is, one is length or either uh, concerned uh, angle of uh, uh, projection. These two points are very, very important. Here for this antenna, you can see here, the length is chosen as L is called square root of S square plus C square. Already I said from this small triangle, you can see here, right? From there, we are measuring this length of the helix as well as alpha is nothing but pitch angle. It is uh, given by tan inverse S by pi D. If you want elaboratively, you can see my helical antenna video. In that, I have given the clear explanation. As it is overview, I am moving forward. Next to this, helical antenna is capable of providing circular polarization. In this, basically, three geometric forms are very, very important. That is straight line, circle, as well as cylinder. That means a single helix can transform into three different types of geometric forms. And basically, helical antenna is operated in two modes. One is normal mode of operation. Second one is axial mode of operation. In normal mode of operation, actually what happens is the helix shape takes the form of a loop or short dipole. So, while it is taking the short dipole form, at that time D goes to 0, alpha is 90. At the time of loop form, alpha tends to 0 as well as S tends to 0. As of overall, we can say that the limiting condition of helical antenna is this one. This one you have to keep in mind. Alpha lies between 0 and 90. That means this is a limiting value for your pitch angle, what we have taken, right? And in normal mode of operation, your output radiation pattern will be like this. See, we have placed our helix in normal way and your radiation will be perpendicular to axis of antenna. So here, output will be perpendicular right next to if you move to axial mode of radiation here along the axial length or axis of antenna your output radiation will be present that means coincided simply i can refer this axial mode to entire mode of operation and i can refer this one to broadside radiation right you can refer back in your antenna array concept and now what is the range of the pitch angle? It is practically chosen between 12 to 18 degrees. And practical value for spacing between the helix is lambda by 4, right? Why we have given these ranges means while you are designing the helical antenna, you can uh, go with these values what I have preferred that is in designing rules and you can design the antenna. We can achieve the maximum radiation, right? And now, here, uh, what are the applications we are having uh, basically for helix is satellite, space telemetry, radio, astronomy. Now, we will move to the next antenna. Right, next one is rhombic antenna. So, actually rhombic antenna is uh, a very old antenna. But in the time when they were using the rhombic antenna, it is usually occupying very, very large spaces. That's why uh, they used to... Uh, very limitly this type of antennas anyhow we'll discuss uh, some of the important points regarding this one this antenna is basically called as double v type antenna or diamond antenna also you can see the shape of this antenna it is like double v right 
these two V's, uh, if we join, automatically it becomes the shape of a rhombus. That's why it is named as rhombic antenna. Its range of frequency is 3 to, uh, th sorry, 3 megahertz to 300 megahertz. And it is always arranged in the form of a rhombus, just rhombic shape. And suspended above the earth means, basically, if this is earth surface, from certain height above the ground, uh, from certain height above the ground, this antenna will be placed, right? So, length of four wires are equal in the range, 2 lambda to 8 lambda. It is nothing but, so you can see here, the four wires you are having, right? Each and every wire should be of same length. This is basic rule for your rhombic antenna, right? Four wires should be of equal length only. Then only maximum power will be radiated along the axis of antenna. So, if this is axis of antenna, you can see the radiation pattern is coincided with that along the axis of antenna, we get maxima radiation. And you can see these are main lobes, these are side lobes. All the main lobes gets added and becomes a single lobe like this. And all the side lobes gets added with minor or back lobe radiation, a very smaller amount, right? And this is the main radiation along the axis of the antenna. And this basically depends on the principle called traveling wave radiator. And here you can see this antenna, you can operate in resonant and non-resonant conditions. If you go with the case of non-resonant, then automatically the pattern we get is unidirectional pattern. And basically two designings are there in rhombic antenna, alignment design as well as maximum field intensity design. In either of these two designs, only we keep in mind three things. One is tilt angle, leg length as well as height above the crown. If say, suppose this is our uh, rhombic antenna, this is called as leg length. And uh, tilt angle means here, with respect to edge surface, we have a ground like this. And height above the ground, we choose with edge. And here, basically, you are having the tilting angle. How much uh, uh, angle you have chosen here between the legs. Based on that, we will be having the three parameters. Tilt angle, leg length, as well as height above the ground. Next, uh, this will be used in majorly in point-to-point -point communications where here the major drawback in this antenna already in the starting I have said large space. It will be occupying lot of space. So, that is a major drawback. Next one is microstrip or patch antennas. Nowadays, these antennas are very, very popular. In the name micro itself indicates that it is a very small antenna. And its frequency range of operation is above 100 megahertz. This is a very, very important point. And this is an example of your patch antenna. Here, the shape of the patch can be of different shapes, rectangular, square, circle, depending on the application. The patch will be just placed on a substrate and from this end, the feed will be provided. And here, uh, everywhere, here micro means low, that already we know. So, the antenna itself is a very low profile, low size, low radiation, lightweight. So, everything will be in a smaller or miniature form. It is just formed with a metallic patch or slip, uh, strip placed on the ground plane. So, this is the patch placed on the ground plane with the dielectric material inside. So, all this part is filled with some dielectric material. And already I said patches can be of different shapes. It can, it can uh, Its flexibility is in the way we can use like an array form. That means these patch antennas can be used like arrays. This array form is very, very popular. And here the main uh, radiation is due to fringing effect. That means what happens in this electric field at the center of patch is zero. But radiation is mainly due to bending of electric lines towards the edge. That means, for example, if you are placing our patch like this over a substrate, automatically the field lines will be like this into the substrate. All this part is nothing but the radiation into air. Okay, in that way, the microstrip antenna will be operating. Next, in this majorly, we need to keep in mind types of feeds, that is coaxial, microstrip feed line, aperture couple feed, proximity couple feed. And application-wise, we are having mainly cell phone antennas. This is a major and important application regarding microstrip. And second one is satellite communication, right? Next one is Yagi Wood antenna. 
this is very popular antenna and in olden days for uh, tv signal receiving this is a main antenna that was being used and its range is 30 megahertz to 3 gigahertz and for every antenna as already i said just keep these diagrams in your mind just three elements with a supporting mast reflector driven element director that's it so it is basically called a parasitic array it consists of driven element reflector and more directors and here feeding is mainly uh, given to driven element only and this reflector and director are called as parasitic elements why they are called as parasitic means we give direct feed only to driven element not to reflect and director and with the effect of magnetic coupling these two uh, elements also start radiation and uh, as it is acting like a mirror whatever the radiation falls on it it will be pushed in forward direction and finally you get maxima radiation in this direction like this and length of driven element is uh, operated in resonance condition always the length of director is less than lambda by 2 that means see simple point this is uh, like a reference length always reflector should be 5% greater director should be 5% smaller okay these thing we have to keep in mind next uh, it is capable of providing unidirectional pattern and gain will be maximum up to 7 db see uh, there was a thing that regarding uh, yagivada antennas it is also called as highest gain antenna this point we have to keep in mind and next uh, driven element may, mostly will be choosing a folded dipole antenna actually in this case in practical outside world you can see these type of antennas why we have chosen folded dipole concept is to increase the input impedance if you go into depth it takes longer time i'll be skipping that point you can watch in my video uh, regarding uh, yagivada antenna next this is a high gain antenna and the point you have to keep in mind is mainly it is used for signal receiving purpose radio astronomy in those cases <coughs> next antenna we are going to discuss is about lens antenna so lens antenna operating range itself is very very high frequencies why they have went for high frequencies is at low frequency this antenna is a bigger drawback and the material we use for lens antenna is glass type material which is also made up of lucite also in the diagrams we have shown here the two types of lenses are shown here diverging lens as well as converging lens and here a drawback in parabolic antenna is overcome with the help of this lens antenna. See, always we know that a new antenna is uh, discovered means simply it is the drawback covered uh, drawback that is overcome from other antennas. So, in this feed support, uh, feed support do not obstruct aperture. That means simply while you see in parabolic antennas as we are using horn antenna as a feed element there we have seen the effect of aperture blocking right so to avoid that aperture blocking concept this antenna was introduced basically so a lens antenna is having its own pros and cons that we'll see types of lens we are having basically dielectric lens delay lens e-plane metal plane in that way three to four types we are having here basically what happens is here circular wavefronts will be generated initially after passing through the lens they are converted into the plane wavefronts this antenna we can operating in transmitting mode as well as receiving mode see you can see here the lens is thinner here here the lens is bulky so depending on the size of the lens its operation will be varying we will be having the slow lens uh, or otherwise delay lens and fast lens application dependent we will be choosing either of these type of lens antennas and lens is heavy, costly, bulky at low frequencies. Already I said, that's why we always prefer the highest frequencies for the operation of lens antenna. And here designing complexity will be there as it is uh, uh, the material we are using is glass related material. And high design tolerance will be available in this as we are going with the aperture blocking, uh, aperture blocking overcoming concept, right? Next antenna we are having is loop antenna. So loop antenna's operating frequency range is uh, 300 megahertz to 3 gigahertz. 
it is simply a long wire uh, which is made in the shape of a loop you can see here i have just given the example of a circular loop antenna as well as we are having so many different types of loops square rectangle triangle uh, so many geometric forms this loop antenna is available it is simply a coil which carries the radio frequency current uh, in where the current will be in phase throughout the loop of the antenna that means throughout the slope it will be flowing in a uniform nature loops are basically two types large loop which refers to length of the loop will be very very uh, equal to lambda value and also called as resonant antenna small loop means it goes to the magnetic loop antenna concept where your length of antenna is just 1 by 10th of your wavelength and shapes of the loops already i said so many geometric forms are available uh, it is very compact in size polarization dependent on the feed uh, sorry feed positions it can be either horizontal polarization or vertical polarization basically these loop antennas are used in rfid tags aircrafts uh, uh, for uh, receivers for direction finding purpose in that way we are having some applications and the horn antenna next one is the hor so the operating frequency range of horn is 300 megahertz to 30 gigahertz seeing the shape of this we can understand why the name uh, horn is given for this antenna this is example of a pyramidal horn antenna simply here the term you need to keep in mind is flared out wave guide flared means opened out wave guide that means this antenna came from the concept of wave guide transformed into a antenna if you close this part uh, just initially only you have a rectangular wave guide that is just extended or opened or flared out like this in the form of an antenna so here the beam energy is slowly transformed into radiation from this end the te modes are entered and they will be exit out like this so why this flaring is done is uh, the basic reason is for impedance matching to increase the directivity all these are the reasons for the flaring done for this antenna and uh, antennas are basically four types e plane h plane pyramidal corn uh, uh, conical horn so why these names are given means just based on the opening done in the horn antenna if flaring is done in electric field direction that means in vertical position a direction it is called e plane sectorial horn and the flaring is done in h direction automatically uh, that is called as h plane sectorial horn and pyramidal horn already i said this is the example we have shown here and last one is conical horn is simply nothing but circular horn right if the opening is done in circular form it is called as conical horn and in this the designing things you have to keep in mind is length of the uh, horn antenna its diameter as well as this is nothing but the path difference this del is actually i have not given one more diagram it will be like this as the video becomes uh, very lengthy i have shortened it here we get the path length uh, sorry path difference del value and this is totally el and this is theta theta is nothing but flare angle flare angle means opening angle and here while designing you should keep in mind small flare angle or theta uh, does not give a good output that means your output will not be much directive if i increase the theta value the reflections will be increased so what is the solution for this problem optimum flare angle that means uh, as already we said for previous antennas whenever we are designing antenna most of the cases the optimum or mid values are chosen for better output in order to balance the gain and directivity here also optimum flare angle is required not very high theta not very low theta value in between the value will be chosen and horn antenna is mainly used in laboratory for measurement as feed help and this is one more way called as standard gain antenna also so horn antenna types are basically based on the type of the flaring we have provided theta is nothing but flare angle l is the length of the horn okay these are the important things regarding the horn antenna so i have discussed all the eight antennas in a single video thank you